whenever you're ready. Okay, uh, my name is Saul. Uh, my topic is NASA. <coughs> And my main claim is uh, NASA offers many benefits to the world and should receive appropriate funding. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but recently NASA has been, uh, they've been cutting their budget a lot lately. And uh, recently they, they cut their budget by one billion in the last two years. And uh, after the Apollo mission in uh, 1973, the space agency budget has steadily declined from 1.37 to 0.6% of the federal budget. Um, uh, NASA only occupies half a penny of your tax dollars, so they only use up half a penny of your tax dollars, so it's like basically nothing. And uh, I propose that they should uh, they should make that at least one penny, so they have more uh, more money to do the things they do. I'm gonna go over the the benefits of NASA having um, money. All right, the first benefit is. Uh, NASA, if, if uh, NASA were to um, have an increase in, uh, in funding, uh, it would help us better understand our world, and it would also help us like, uh, protect it uh, further. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about uh, recently, they, actually not recently, a few years back, they found out that a huge asteroid uh, by the name of Apophis is going to hit, um, well there's a chance it might hit Earth in the year 2029, and uh, it will hit in the Pacific Ocean, and it will cause a tsunami that will wipe out all of uh, the northern Northern America. So we know that 14 years in advance, so we have uh, a lot of time to prepare for that. But if NASA or not uh, had received funds um, beforehand, we would never know that. So NASA plays a big part in our safety, and also helps us learn uh, many things. Um, studying uh, worlds like planets like Venus and Mars also help us um, better understand uh, how climate change can uh, change based on what planet you're looking at. It can also give us um, insight into what we need to do here on Earth. Um, also, it's been rumored that um, in the next upcoming years, we'll be able to move into Mars uh, as like a plan two, plan B, uh, because we're using our resources so fast, frequently, and we're running our resources here on Earth uh, we're like burning up everything, deforestation and such. Um, NASA has also uh, not not just in, helped us in space and like help us understand um, what what's around us, but also helps helped us uh, fight cancer, uh, such as breast cancer. Um, images from the Hubble telescope have helped uh, breast cancer researchers um, better understand what what they're looking at whenever they get an MRI or CAT scan. Uh, they use uh, uh, strain images from the Hubble telescope to better uh, look at what they're looking for, like what uh, kind of cells they're looking for. And um, NASA has also contributed a lot to the um, to our research in cancer, and they have also produced uh, MRI, CAT scan, X-rays. I'm not sure if you guys are aware. Uh, the physicists actually discovered that. Okay, uh, NASA has also helped us in, in uh, for, to further go on, on uh, the fight against cancer. They uh, have used microgravity to help us understand how um, cancer cells work uh, in in an uh, environment where it's not in the body, and it helped them uh, see uh, uh, mimic what what would happen if cancer were to be in the body. It helped them understand and help uh, early detect detect cancer in, uh, in certain people. Uh, to summarize, uh, adding uh, more money to our, our NASA uh, program will help us uh, further battle things here at, in Earth and also help us uh, explore what's, what's around us and hopefully give us an option uh, once we do use up our resources because I don't see us uh, slowing down on using our resources anytime soon. Thank you.
Uh, Saul, let me uh, start with a couple of uh, comments about the opening of the speech. You identify the topic, but the proposition is in two parts. And uh, the second part is a policy claim. At the, you know, and immediately afterwards, you even identify what the policy is. You say, basically, you want to double NASA's budget. So that goes from whatever they're spending now, you want them to have twice as much. So we need to know why having twice as much is going to make a difference. Um, you know, it's the idea that you, if you spend twice as much, you're going to get twice as much seems to be a presupposition in your argument, but I didn't hear any evidence to suggest that was the case. I didn't hear any information that said that the uh, current scientific research is underfunded, that we are on the brink of being able to make particular kind of discoveries, but we have uh, not been able to ha afford to spend the money that would get us to those particular points. And it really feels like it's just a, a random argument about, well, more money would be better. NASA does nice things and so we should give them more money. But I don't see, you know, if your argument is going to be that there's going to be a, a, an increase in scientific discovery if we increase their budget, you need to tie in the spending to increases in the budget. And you don't do that. You just, you kind of review some of NASA's accomplishments and some of the things that they, uh, their, their scientific progress has helped us with. And I think that uh, most people will have a great deal of respect for NASA and they understand that um, investment is necessary. But in essence, you're telling us we need to double our investment. And I'm going, well, what are we, what more are we going to get? We already have the things that you've talked about. What things could we potentially have that we're not going to get? Also, I'm a little worried because apparently what we're spending all this money on is all going to be wiped out in 2029 anyway. So why are we spending all this money? We're all going to be dead. And the whole Northern Hemisphere, according to you, is going to be gone. No, no, just the Northern Hemisphere, you know, just us, you know, yeah. us, the ones spending the money, us, where NASA is, you know, I'm, you know, I'm all for solving cancer in Malaysia, but, you know, the truth of the matter is that I'm, I think I'd prefer to move to Malaysia than spend all my money funding NASA uh, until this country is wiped out, <laughs> you, you know, I, I think, and, you know, so it's nice that NASA's told us this, are they doing anything about this? That's a little problematic. Now, organizationally, there's no preview of what the structure is going to be. I can kind of pick out a structure as you're speaking. You need to have more distinct secondary claims, um, and, and they need to be uh, signposted more clearly. Uh, there's a claim that says, you know, research is going to produce all these advantages, and then you give us those examples, and then you say there are health effects, and you talk about that, and then you talk about, you know, and you use illustrations of cancer for those particular benefits. Um, I did not hear a single source citation in the speech. I didn't hear, you know, all, I heard, <coughs> it's been rumored, uh, we can, the physicists can do this sort of thing, but I don't hear any sources on this. The closest you came to something that is specific is, are the budget numbers that you presented in the introduction to show what NASA's current spending is. Uh, and I know that you've got all of this information from some source, but none of it is cited in the presentation. And so it's, uh, in essence, uh, easy for somebody who is skeptical to dismiss it and say that doesn't sound all that convincing. Now, I do think that you have the right supporting points, the idea that, they're, that NASA's work is important. That's something that I think needs to be emphasized, and you have that point in there, that there are health benefits that uh, we are going to get. And for instance, that the, the spending on NASA is going to produce unseen benefits in the long run. I think those are the right secondary claims to have in your argument. So you're doing a good job there. I think you do a very nice job speaking to the audience also. So uh, you can be, you're a little bit more convincing that way. But like I said, the citation of material is problematic. And, uh, you know, it, I'm, like I said, if, if the Northern Hemisphere in particular, uh, you know, North America is going to be gone in 14 years, I, I'm, I'm, you're going to have a hard time convincing people that we ought to be spending our money on that instead of spending our money on moving. You know, so I, I think that's where we need to spend our money all of a sudden. Uh, one distracting thing while you're speaking, you keep clicking the pen, try to keep the pens out of your hand. That It just becomes a tool that people play with. All right, thank you for starting us.